tonight I'm going to go pedestrian mobile on 70 centimeters. It's a band I've not often used, except in the occasional VHF field day contest. 70 centimeters has pros and cons compared to 2 meters. The advantages is lower ambient noise level and it being easier to get higher antenna gain in a smaller package. For instance, you can very easily carry, as I am now, 9 or 10 dB of gain. Shortcomings of 70 centimeters include its generally shorter range, though that's not always the case. There are cases when signals can be strong on 70, but not on 2 meters. The decisive factor though is activity patterns. Generally speaking, people start their activity on 2 meters, and I'm talking about SSB here. If they are successful, they might go up to 70, and if successful there, they'll go to the microwave bands. 70 centimeters is sort of a halfway house, where people seldom originate contacts on that band, and if they do, often move higher, so they don't spend much time there. One exception is the 70 centimeter SSB net on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. local. It's on the other side of Melbourne, but straight across the bay, so I should be able to make myself heard, especially with the gain that I'm using. No, the only thing I think is the tent and maybe a light uh, keep me company at night, mate, over. And I can camp just as luxuriously as I did this weekend, and it'll take two minutes to set up. Yeah, Roger, uh, Peter, good to hear you again this uh, this week, and uh, uh, you got a better signal on UHF than you did on uh, VHF last week. Pedestrian Mobile again at Chelsea, great signal. Uh, this is VK3CBP. You have... Uh, uh, at Neil, sorry, at Werribee, and you have Steve in Baronia, uh, VK3YW, um, uh, for the, um, just before the beginning of the, um, the Merck Coffee Club uh, vertical sideband net, Peter. So good to hear you on again. VK3YE in the group, VK3CBP. VK3MBL. Yeah, Roger, uh, Peter, VK3YE in the group, VK3CBP. Yeah, fine signal here. Uh, strength 3, and um, uh, when you moved it round, I could just hear you faintly off the back of the beam. Uh, and acknowledging uh, Ray NBL uh, joining the, uh, the net. Um, and I'll just uh, throw it over to uh, Steve, YW, in Baronia, just to see if he does have a copy on you, uh, Peter and then uh, we'll throw it over to Ray. Uh, VK3YW, you copy Peter, uh, pedestrian mobile at Chelsea, VK3CBP. Okay, VK. Yeah, and acknowledging KVK. Uh, yeah, I can copy Peter in uh, all directions he's pointing. Uh, about an, uh, yeah, about an S, well, yeah, S0, no, no signal strength beaming towards you. And when he swung around this way, it was an S4. So, uh, no problem at all. Yeah, VK3 YE, VK3 KVK in the coffee club. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, and Peter, again, uh, good to hear you on. Uh, and everyone else, of course. Uh, you are uh, just under an S2. Leo, when you turn the beam this way, and uh, I'm just recording this as well, as usual now. <laughs>
Overall, results were good, with some stations reporting stronger signals for me on 70 than on 2, although the 6-element Yagi probably had a big part of it. One thing I noticed though, were the bigger variations on 70 centimetres in signal strength as I walked along. A little bit of height also made a bigger difference, as you might expect. Standing on top of a bench on a dune, a little bit back from the water, produced much better signals than being right at the water's edge. Another shortcoming was due to the station's design, requiring an extra hand to hold the antenna. One possibility could have been an omnidirectional antenna much higher on 70 than on 2 metres. For instance, if you could mount a 9 metre squid pole in a backpack and have a vertical antenna on that for 70, then results might be almost as good as the Yagi at a much lower height. That would also provide omnidirectional coverage which was a problem this evening because stations were in different directions.